Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California and Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is March 30th and right now we're going to take a first look at the eclipse forecast. So what I'm showing you here is the path of totality. It's going to become a total solar eclipse just off the coast of Mexico, move across the USA, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland here, and then it will end as it gets over the Atlantic Ocean. And you want to make sure you are underneath the path of totality here. It is literally a night and day difference between 99% and the total solar eclipse there. Anybody who has witnessed a total solar eclipse versus the partial knows exactly what I'm talking about. I compare it to being a storm chaser and seeing a puffy white cumulus cloud versus a huge supercell thunderstorm with a tornado and bolts of lightning coming out of it. It is the makes a world of difference here. So make sure you're in the right spot of this. Now, the problem is here is that some of the models are showing a pretty potent system here across some of the Southwest USA, spreading clouds and potentially precipitation across some of the best viewing areas, at least climatologically speaking. So if I click on some of these locations, you can see viewability, at least according to the climate records, about 70% across many portions of Texas here, or at least about 60%. And as you go off to the north and east, you know, it's still springtime here. So you can get some pretty uh, reduced viewing potential, at least according to the climate record. So you can see Cleveland there, you're right about 39%. And you can click on some of these other areas and you can see 47%. There's Burlington, Vermont. So yeah, uh, we're going to be paying attention closely to this cloud forecast coming up here. And the big drama right now is that the models are showing the cloud cover across a lot of the best viewing areas here. So we'll dive into those details over the next few days. But let's scroll through here. I've got the European on the left versus the Canadian model on the right. So we're about April 2nd here. Here we go to April 3rd. And as we go on into the 6th and 7th, you can see this troughing here over much of the western portion of North America. And then we've got this trough kind of swinging through here. You can see the Canadian model and the European. And at 220 hours plus, we are going to have some model disagreement. But the biggest takeaway is that most models are showing this troughing here across the southwest USA. And that could ruin some of the viewing potential across much of the lower 48 states here and Mexico. If we take Take a look at the GFS on the left versus the Canadian on the right. We're going to plow ahead here. Now we're going on to April 7th here. And you can again see that troughing across some of the Southwest USA as we go on in through that day Monday. And so here we're getting close to the eclipse. And you can see the Canadian, the GFS, and the European was a little bit further west, but still pretty good agreement with that troughing across a lot of the Southwest USA. So I'm showing the winds here at about 39,000 feet or 200 millibars. So there could be a subtropical jet stream around as well, bringing some high clouds across Mexico that could ruin some viewing here across Mazatlan, some of the mountainous areas here as well. And you can see all the clouds across Texas, Arkansas, Missouri. And as you go off towards Cleveland and out towards the Northeast, there are some areas that are gonna be clear the, our job is to find out which areas those are. So what I recommend is to stay flexible at this time range right now. Things are going to change drastically and this trough could slow way down or it could be weaker and further north and we could be dealing with much clearer skies across some of the areas. But the models have kind of been pretty consistent here over the last few days. So it's definitely something worth watching if you want to have the best viewing options. If we look at the Canadian as well, you can kind of see those high clouds out and about here. But you know, not everybody can just go up and leave and try to go chase clouds or at least chase clear skies during a solar eclipse. So there's always the potential, even on days of severe thunderstorms, if they're predicting severe thunderstorms across Texas during that day, you could still have clear skies in the you know the late morning, even into the early afternoon hours here. So not all is lost. You don't need to go racing across the country necessarily. Depends on how important things are to you. But we will be breaking this down day by day. We'll continue to watch this as we go. Now, look at the European. This is Monday morning here. Let's go ahead and scroll another one more here. This is actually Monday afternoon there, April 8th. But you can see that pretty good agreement with this precipitation kind of hanging around some of the central, south central USA there. And of course, there would be high clouds associated with the subtropical jet stream helping feed some of this moisture. So we've got a lot to watch here over the next few days. The good news is, of course, is we're still 220, 230 hours out from this event as we speak. So I'm not taking it too seriously just yet. I've even got a hotel book down there in Texas right now. 
but I will up and change my plans depending on the forecast upcoming here. This is the Canadian model. Let's just plow right ahead here towards the 8th. Here we go to the morning of the 8th, and you can kind of see it, that precipitation hanging out there, that low pressure center centered right over Kansas there as we go on in through the morning of the 8th. So, yeah, fun stuff here. We'll, but we'll continue to watch this. It, it's almost to the point right now that we're so far out that I, you know, things are going to change, and I'm not really too worried about it just yet. The system could easily slow down by a day or it could speed up at this point or it could be much further north like I mentioned or much weaker and we might get better sun breaks out of this here across much of the uh, total solar eclipse viewing area and again here's what it looks like you can see as you come on towards the Mexico coastline here Mazatlan passes just clips San Antonio actually the eastern portions of San Antonio here so yeah this is what we'll be watching over the next few days so anyway um, we'll go into more detail as we get closer some of the model runs will start to show uh, simulated infrared satellite imagery at about 180 hours out so in another couple of days here we'll have more data and then of course as we get closer to the event itself we'll have high resolution models and all kinds of good stuff to look at so no need to get worried just yet plenty of time for this forecast to change no doubt about it. So anyway, yeah. Uh, so uh, we'll let's go ahead and do these videos. I'll probably post them on the California channel here um, for the next uh, few days uh, leading up to the event. I'm probably heading out on the 5th or 6th, but I'll continue to do my daily briefings as always when I head out on the road. So anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. Tell me what you think about these videos. Um, we're going to go into a lot more detail about this forecast as we get closer to it. As you know, if you've been watching my uh, daily briefings on the California Pacific Northwest channel, I like to get into the weeds on some things as well. So we'll be looking at that as we get closer to the eclipse event. So anyway, hope you guys are having a good day and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.